Hi everyone. Good evening. This is Jean from Jean's Gems and I wanted to share a little project with you. Um, I had started this video yesterday but noticed that I was out of frame and I'm trying to work with a new setup for my camera so that the um, the videos look a little bit neater. So um, what I have for you today are some really cute envelope projects for your journal. So if you take a look at, I'm going to just move this out a tiny bit. If you take a look at these little envelopes, I just have some cards in there for stiffness, but they are pockets that you can put in your journal. And what I did is I used different sized envelopes. Some of the, these are two of the larger ones, but they're mixed media style. And they're just really pretty. I think for um, our journals. So you can do them in the different color combinations you need or the different designs that you need for your particular journal. But this is how I've decorated mine. Now I use the larger envelopes and then I use the smaller coin envelopes. So with the coin envelope, I had a few in my, um, paper stash that I got, I think from a friend who sold me a lot of scrapbooking supplies when she was um, no longer doing scrapbooking. But these are mainly made up of coin envelopes, which you can get at a like office supply store. However, I don't know if you can get them in different colors. The only ones that I've seen are like the manila or the yellow envelopes that you get for documents. But they will still work perfectly fine because you cover up the front of the, the um, pocket mostly anyway. So what we use, what I've used with this is a mixed media technique that I will show you how to do. We'll make one together. Um, we've used a couple different elements. So we've used um, these dried pressed flowers. We've used a doily. We've used some book paper, some scrapbook paper, some stamping. So I'm going to show you how I made these. And the butterflies at the top are Tim Holtz die cuts. And I think they just, I love the way if, for example, if you push this one down all the way, I love how it just, um, shows the top of the butterfly. So if you do want to use it as a, like a, um, a pocket that is hidden, that would be a great idea. Now, I don't have a circle punch or anything, but you could punch there to make it easier for them to come out or design your tags so that they have a top on them and they're easy to pull out. But these are just some small cards that I have in craft stock that I got um, online and they fit perfectly in the coin envelope size. So I just put some in there while they were drying to keep them, you know, s stiffened up and straight. So those are the different ones that I've made, a red, a green, a lilac, and a yellow. And I want to take a few minutes to show you just real quick. This is one that I did last night and um, I used some music note paper on this one and basically the same concept of scrapbook paper and then some vintage ephemera and then some stamping. But um, 
what I've done here is I have put this onto my journal page with a paper clip. So this just gives you an idea of how you can use them. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, if you like the butterfly sticking out at the top, that's great. Or, you know, you could actually glue this down. Um, this one I would probably glue down. It looks like these have been around a little while, so the glue that was used to seal the envelopes has yellowed. But you could definitely glue this down on your journal page as well and get a really nice um, pocket on there for um, to hide some tags or something in them. So today I'm going to show you a couple different envelope styles that I have and then we'll work on a project together. So the um, the envelopes that I have available are, um, I have a couple more of these coin envelopes in different colors and then I have these that are smaller and square. I only have them in white. I have a yellow one, like the larger ones I showed you. And then I found just a regular um, decorative envelope. There's one other kind that I want to try out today. And this one is a really large, a long, um, sort of like a coin envelope style as well but you it, you could probably put documents in here or whatever you needed to but the <clears throat> this is unless you're doing a tall skinny journal this would probably be really too deep for a um a pocket at least um, if you would leave it in its original state of straight up and down. Um, you could possibly fold it in half and put it in your signature. And then you would have a pocket here and then um, a plain piece on the other side. What I actually did with mine is I went ahead and I glued the sides down. So you can see here that they're glued down. And then I opened up the flap for the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decorate this layer and I'm gonna decorate this layer. And so we're gonna have a pocket from behind and then we're going to have a decorative pocket in the front. So I will see if we can work on that tonight but the main one I want to show you are these little coin envelopes because I think they're just so fun to do and the one that I have already started is the screen one it has um, a doily already placed on it and this is kind of a mint and gold design if you can see that I hope my lighting is okay. So the original way that the envelope goes is like this. But when, if you would use this, <coughs> pardon me, in your journal this way, you would see the, um, where the envelope is sealed. Now that's not going to be a problem if you are going to cover the entire um, envelope with paper. But what I have done is I have bent the flap over backwards. That way, when you adhere this to your journal, you're covering up the seam part. And then you have your little pocket right here. So that's how um, I have done the ones that I showed you previously. And that's what we're gonna do today. So the first thing I want to find is something that's along the gold or green line as far as um, paper. And I'm gonna use something like this. 
and I think this is a really pretty piece of paper. Um, and I'm just going to tear it in little pieces. So I don't know if I told you all, but whenever I got my, um, my stash of um, scrapbook papers from my friend who was going out of scrapbooking, she actually gave me Oh, I don't know. I have it, if you know those huge Sterilite containers, the big ones that you use for storage. Um, she, I have a um, one of those full of um, scrapbook paper. So I'm trying to get out of my element of only using florals. So this is kind of a, a paisley design or some kind of swirls it had, Fleur de Lis or something it has on it. So I'm going to try that for this project. And I'm also using my um, Liquitex matte gel. Um, this gel is really nice because it will be opaque and then translucent when it's dry and I get the matte because I don't want the glossy look. Um, and it dries pretty quickly and also you can mix it with acrylics or you can mix it with water. And one of the things the matte medium will do is um, it can be used for sealing your projects when you're finished but you can also use it to extend the life of your acrylic so if you have um some acrylic paint and you're running out you can mix some of this with the acrylic paint that you do have if you need it for a project and it won't change the color because it's it's translucent um and some people will put this on as well for um, one of the priming elements for their canvases when they're making them as well. But it also specifies on the back that it's an excellent glue for collage. And that's why I started using matte medium. I think that is one of the most important elements or um, mediums to have in your stash because you're going to find that um, it has a lot of uses. And if, if you get a bottle this size, it can last you forever. That's why mine's so um, raggedy looking because I've actually had that that um, container for a little while. So there we go with two pieces. And you know, as I mentioned to you before, one of the methods that I use for collage is I use odd numbers and I try to place my pieces in a way that um, that I always have the odd numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this one down here at the bottom. And then we have a nice start to our collage on the envelope. What um, I am gonna do is now that this is pressed down, and it, you can see that gel medium on there. We're gonna put some other things on top of the envelope, but it will dry matte, and you won't even notice that once it's completely dry. So I'm going to go ahead and see where I put, okay, here are my scissors. So I'm just gonna cut off the edges. I like when I'm collaging, when I get to the edge point to, trim off any excess. That way I get a nice straight line. And I don't always throw out the offcuts. I don't know where that other one flew off to. 
I think it's just right here. But I keep these just in case I need to add a couple other pieces. So in addition to the um, collage paper, I'm also going to use something that has print on it. Now, um, pardon me one second while I grab my, oops, sorry guys, while I grab my um, dictionary. Dictionaries I love for book paper projects because they, um, they're, the print is fine. And I just have this small little um, English French one that I've had forever in a day. So I'm just going to tear a piece out of this. And there are different ways to collage. If you have ink pads, um, even some of the distressed ink pads that a lot of people use in the art um, community, you can pre-ink some of this um, book paper and before you collage it down or any of the pieces and get a really interesting effect. But one thing you have to understand with the Tim Holtz inks, because they are water-based, um, once it mixes with your gel medium, it'll run. So if you don't want the, um, the effect of the ink coming off into the green here or changing the look of your collage paper, you know, I wouldn't pre-ink these. So we will be um, inking the edge of the envelope then when we're finished and see how that looks. And I like uh, the gold design on this doily. So I'm going to see if I have a way that we can bring some of that in to the collage. I'm not going to collage a whole lot up here at the top because once we put the flap down, it's going to cover a lot of that. So I'm going to keep my collage down here at the bottom. It's up to you. You want to collage the whole envelope, go ahead. It, some of them I have, some of them I haven't. So it's just a personal preference. So there we go. We have um, three pieces of book paper and we have three pieces of um, scrapbook paper. And let's see what this looks like. I like it like that. I think I am because I don't want this green in the middle. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the book pages. So keeping in mind that I'm going with odd numbers, I'm going to add two more so that we have five pieces. And that's just, uh, I used to do some floral arranging um, years ago, and I remember some of those techniques from floral arranging, how you use odd numbers, and I just carried that through into my art. It's not a hard and fast rule. It's just something that I do that helps me make sense of what I'm doing when I'm collaging. So I'm not going to add any more of the um, scrapbook paper. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it like this. Now, the gel museum has not completely dried, but that is okay um, because what we're going to be using next is um, a stays on ink. Stays on is just a brand but um, I have had some of these stays on pads forever in a day and they do last a long time. And the reason I'm using stays on is because it's a permanent ink, thus the name stays on. It stays on and it doesn't go anywhere. So I put my 
Um, and I don't know what it is about stays on ink, but it always smells like berries or something. To me, it smells good. Okay, scissors back here. And I know my script stamp. So these are just foam script stamps that I got um, in a Tim Holtz collection. And I love these foam ones because they're thick enough that you could just pounce this right here on your ink and then right here on your design with your fingers. And you don't even need a block at all. So I'm just going to put some random stamps in here. At this part, this at this point, I'm not so much worried about the um, the odd numbers. I'm just stamping where I think it would look nice. So there we have the stamping on there. And if you do get stays on ink, make sure you do not throw this plastic piece away because if you do, your ink pad will dry out. Believe me, I know from experience. So there we go, there's the stamping that we've done. Now lastly, I want to add a little bit of color to this. And I am going to stay within the green theme. So I have some of my Dilutions ink spray and I'm going to use, ooh, that came out a lot. Um, this is called the Fresh Lime. It's one of my favorites. Now, we were talking about how this gel medium causes things to run or spread. That to me is going to be okay because I'm just going to go through here on some of these book pages and I'm going to make them highlight them a little bit with this um, green spray ink. If you guys have not had the opportunity to use this spray ink, it is absolutely amazing. I really like it. Now I want to show you right here, if you notice, see how this has a white edge? I'm going to go over that just with the tip of my brush and cover up that white edge on that scrapbook paper so that it blends in more with um, the overall design. So you can even put some onto the envelope itself if you want to change the color from the olive to a more green you can definitely do that but when you does however you want to design this um is perfectly up to you if you get any ink that you feel is too dark you can just take a baby wipe and Actually, it's not going to come off this because of um, the paper being thin and the ink saturates so quickly. But in the event that that would happen, that's an option you have to wipe that up with it. So all you need is just a little spritz and then you can get this great um, additional color to add to your envelope collage. Now, I usually keep packaging that I have and use that for my, um, my ink because you only need just a little spray and then it wipes right off and you can use it again. So let me put that back. So here we have a couple collage elements. We've used scrapbook paper, book paper, inking with the stamp, and we've also used the Dilutions ink, and we've used gel medium. So in this little space, we've used all kinds of mediums to make a nice collage effect. So the last thing we're going to do is I have some dried flowers 
And if I can get this little guy open, er, maybe I'm gonna open it. No, that's all right, in. I got these little tiny things from Timu, and they're so cute, but they're heck to get open for some reason. So I'm trying to think, let me see what I have in here, but I'm wondering, I've been wanting to use this, um, this pink one right here because it has some green on it. And I think that would look nice as a contrasting color. And then we'll use one of the blue ones right here. And then let's see what other color we have that might be pretty. I haven't opened too many of these yet because I don't want them to dry out and fall apart. So, actually, I'm going to go out on a limb on this one and use this tiny little piece. Let me see. I might switch these around like this. So what I'm going to do to adhere those is I'm going to use um, the beacon glue. The reason being is because I do want them to stick well, but later I will show you how we will need to um, actually... I don't know why that, I I have, um, there's another artist that I watch quite a bit. Her name is Lehman from um, Lace Covered Skies. And she does, she loves her beacon glue. But she was talking about it getting a little bit stringy. And I think that's just the, the kind of glue that it is. But it does have some acetone in it. And that makes it nice because then the, um, oh, we were going to put this one up here because the, uh, the paper doesn't wrinkle when you use the glue with the, the acetone in it. So if it does get a, a little bit gloppy or sticky or stringy, I find that it happens to me whenever I forget to put the lid on tight or if I'm working on a project for a while and the lid's off for a little bit, that will happen. And I did read that you can put just a little bit of acetone if you have any for your nails just right in the bottle, just a tiny bit, and then it'll... Um, loosen it up some. Now, since we're using these dried flowers, you really have to go over them with um, gel medium because they're fragile and the petals will come off if you don't do that. I hadn't done that with the very first one that I tried, my example piece, and um, I came back a day later and probably just from shuffling it around on my desk or whatever, it got one of the flowers lost its petals. So that's why when you go over this with gel medium, just gently, you'll be able to seal this down on the envelope better and it'll keep, should keep the petals from falling off. So these ones that I've already done that I have sealed it with gel medium, it's they've come out just, you know, very nice. So none of them have fallen apart since I started to seal them with gel medium. I tell you guys, this is just, this has been a game changer for me with a lot of my collaging techniques. So if you have a chance to pick some up, <clears throat> I'm sure you can, if you don't shop 
any of the craft stores. You could probably find it online somewhere. Ranger. <coughs> I get a lot of my project products from Ranger as well. And they have um, gel medium. I think one of the artists that works with them makes a gel medium. It's a smaller container, but I, like I said, you don't use that much, so it goes quite a long way. So there we have our design for the envelope itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a set sentiment that I think would look nice with this. And I'm going to try to find something. I don't know if I... I got a whole bunch of these. And they're really, really nice. Because you can use them. They come in different colors. The actual papers. You can do the standard white. But there's also like a blue. And a purple. And I think on this one. I'm going to tr put a blue. And... I'm going to use, um, I don't want a big, a big, um, I'm going to use this one, Cultivate Kindness. Reason I'm using this one is because I think this is something that all of us can keep in mind. In today's world, people don't tend to be very kind, do they? So, we're going to go with Cultivate Kindness. I often wonder when that happens, why people feel that they have to be brisk or snarky or unkind and how they can be happy themselves being that way. So just some food for thought. I'm going to go ahead and glue down this flap. Now I'll let you guys decide, decide when you make your own um, mixed media envelope whether or not you want to do that. But I think gluing down... The top is perfectly fine. And I'm going to use one of these butterflies. How did he get purple on him? I don't know. These are just some die cuts that I got that I have from Tim Holtz. That one seems a little bit big. Let me see what else I have. I really like... Um, I really like this flower on there. That's kind of pretty, but I think I'm going to go with, um, let me see if I can find another sideways butterfly. Let me see how big this one looks on here. That one's kind of big and I, the colors don't really match. So, I don't know what happened to this one. Let me see why his feet. His feet are purple. But I'm going to go ahead and use him anyway. I think it got in a blob of ink. So... Would you have a um, small craft space to use? Sometimes those little mistakes do happen. But it doesn't really detract from the design. Um, I don't think. So we could probably... Um, I wiped all my green off. So we'll just leave it like that. And... Um, <laughs> 
one of the things we could do is, you know, um, I was talking about how sometimes you get pieces of um, ephemera and things that have imperfection. Okay, that's not going to come up. So we're not going to worry about the the feet. The feet, the feet, the feet. Let's see. We're not going to worry about the feet. We're going to just change it and put this big butterfly on that doesn't have purple feet. And then I can fix that piece later. So there we go. Not too, too big for this one, but it still looks really nice. So there we go. There's what we do for the initial... Um, overall design. Now, I usually like to use some kind of 3D elements, but I noticed that the last journal I made, everything was so bulky and thick. So I'm trying to train my mind to do things more um, flat so that we can get um, some nice structure to the journal without having too many of the 3D elements. However, I think the cover can be as 3D as you want it to be and save the 3D elements for the cover or maybe the um, you could do some of the pockets probably or maybe um, make your 3D element be a tassel or a dangle or something of that nature. So here we have the green one that we made. And I think it turned out really nice. And what you can do with these if you need to um, make them stand out anymore than what they already do. You could add your add some um, Stickles glitter glue to this, or um, maybe some flat back pearls. So if you don't want to do just a floral design, you can do <clears throat> all kinds of designs. So I just thought these were um, really pretty and functional for our journals and you can um, get all different colored envelopes or you can cover them or paint them or whatever you want to do to get the different colors but then you can put them in your journals and make them hide some beautiful tags or um, some stickers or something like that that you might want to put in them. These large ones are really nice too for larger tags and um, this, these actually, let me show you this because I'm just looking at it now. I have one here. So this is how the envelope closes. So for some reason with this envelope, if you if you leave it like this, you can open the flap and then put the pockets. So you could certainly do the larger ones, vice versa. But if you do this way, you're going to have to cover up what you see here if there's any discoloration or any seams in your envelope. So that's what I did with these. They, The pocket is in the back and I just flipped the top over and then made sure that I covered up all of the um, seams that you could see on the side. Now, 
this particular one, I used napkin instead of scrapbook paper. So if you have some scraps of napkin, you can certainly put that in your design and it comes out really nice with the napkins as well and using the gel medium. So I just love this sentiment, be in love with your life. Miracles happen when you believe. I think this one's very um, apropos because of the um, kind of the fantasy vibe that you get with the mushrooms. And this one says, let life surprise you. Cultivate kindness is the one we made today. You still give me butterflies. Oh, and this one, I actually used um, red paper. And then I used, I, I don't remember if this is rice paper or mulberry paper, but I had some of it and I just ripped it and put it on there. And I think it gives it a really nice um, effect on your collage as well. And then this one says, smile has power. And isn't that true? Just giving someone a nice smile every day makes them feel so much better. And then this one says sweet memories. So all of the little sentiments and this one glorious day, um, all the little sentiments are perfect for um, the any type of journal, just positive thought type sentiments. And that's what I like. Um, I had told you about getting those terrible um, sentiment stickers from Timu that I thought, how in the world am I ever going to incorporate these ridiculous sayings into my art? And um, then I went ahead and ordered a few more and uh, they came they came with much more um, appropriate uh, sentences. So some of these are clear and some of them are colored so I use different um, from different packages of sentiments that I had so I thought these were really fun and a great way for you to use up some envelopes if you have them and um, they're bright and pretty so they would um, you know look good on any page any kind of junk journal you're doing so I went to the bank today and I got one of their envelopes that they put the cash in and I'm going to try doing one of those and see how that turns out. Um, probably going to steer away from the butterfly theme this next time we make some of these and um, look for something a little more... Um, whimsical and fun that doesn't necessarily have to do with flowers. So let me um, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And um, I had broken my fingernail and I went to the Dollar General. I don't know if you have a Dollar General in your area, but I picked up this um, really nice nail polish. And I just wanted to let you know, if you do like a cheap nail polish, this is called Believe Beauty. And I think this was only a dollar or a dollar or 25 or something. But um, it went on really smooth. I didn't do two coats. And then I bought um, a clear one just for my fingernail that had broken. And I really like them. Everything, my hands always get so inked up and but you know that's the life of an artist if you're a true artist you're messy and um get glue and paint on you so that's my thought anyway all right guys so once again thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me i love you all be safe and art on bye